Hey guys and welcome back to my channel to a brand new video and today's video is actually going to be recovery related because I'm going to be starting to do recovery Q&A's um, just answering some questions. I will try not to repeat myself of what I've said in previous videos but I want to try and just be there for this community and just I think it's always going to be helpful for someone who's been through it and has recovered and it will be extremely beneficial for those who kind of need that inspiration that extra push into recovery or just that motivation to realize that it's possible that this person's done it so i can do it too because it really helped me when i would sit and i would watch tabitha's videos and knowing that she's been through it and she's did it and i think that reassurance is something that we all definitely need and i hope this video helps you so i took to instagram to ask you guys what you want to see more topics on um i've listed a few i've wrote down some um because there were so many and i will make sure to make more videos in the future about these different topics but for now i'm going to answer these ones so first of all is how do you go from quasi recovery to all in recovery having no hunger cues whatsoever so let's discuss hunger cues first so hunger cues are kind of non-existent when you first start recovery it can be either way you can be really really hungry or they can actually be non-existent and that's mainly because your body's not used to sending hunger signals because it's kind of got to the point where it's given up on sending hunger signals so say you haven't ate enough food you're not going to have enough energy to send hunger signals and you know the mental hunger or the physical hunger cues and it's often in the case that you will become more mentally hungry than physically hungry because of the fact that um since energy is used to create these hunger signals once you have enough energy to start sending hunger signals it's going to want to store the energy so it's going to want to just send mental hunger at first which is a lot cheaper than physical hunger signals then over time when it starts to trust you it will start to send physical hunger signals and that's usually when extreme hunger comes in and you can have extreme mental hunger and extreme physical hunger Hunger cues are also quite difficult because often the brain tricks you, the eating disorder tricks you more like. Because you might not think you're hungry, but you're actually really, really hungry. And the reason for this might be, you know, you might have really bad anxiety about a certain meal that you're going to have. And it might make you not hungry for it anymore. And it might make you sick because you've got so much anxiety around it. It does not mean that you're not hungry. It just means that you're feeling sick because of the anxiety. And that's why I would always get confused because I could be craving a Chinese takeaway and then finally agree to have a Chinese takeaway. And then it would actually come down to it. And I'd be like, I don't want a Chinese takeaway anymore. When in fact, I did crave a Chinese and I was still hungry for a Chinese takeaway. But because of the anxiety, it made me feel like I wasn't hungry for it anymore. But I still went ahead and I still had the Chinese despite how I was feeling beforehand. And it actually turned out when I was sitting down eating the Chinese, I was ex extre extremely hungry for it. And I actually would finish the entire thing. And that just goes to show you that your brain is really tricky. And it will trick you at any given moment about hunger cues. So... If you're extra, extra hungry, then listen to that too. And if you're not hungry, still eat. You still need to eat despite what your hunger says. And I know that it's confusing too because obviously all in is all about honoring your hunger and eat when you're hungry and stuff. But there is still minimums in place. So still eating a minimum of three meals and free snacks every single day and making sure they are big snacks and big meals. And you should never, ever, ever skip a meal in recovery despite how you're feeling, despite what's going on, you know, food is the most important thing in your life right now. So the next question is cravings. So it's, will cravings stop? Will cravings, what cravings do I listen to? What cravings do I not listen to? Etc. Um, so cravings will stop. I know from experience, obviously. So I used to be craving lots of different food. My main cravings in recovery was usually um, takeaway, so Chinese to be specific, um, pizza, Domino's pizza. Uh, and I also really craved cake. So cake was like my main thing I ate during recovery. And I would eat like eight cupcakes, sometimes entire cakes and stuff. And now when I bake a cake, I do not eat, need to eat the entire cake because I don't extremely crave the entire cake. And another thing is that when it comes down to things like um, takeaways now, I still, if I crave a takeaway, I will still have a takeaway. I still crave takeaways sometimes. And the difference is though, is that I don't feel the need to eat the entire thing there and then, because back then it felt as if, oh, this might be the last time I got a takeaway. And like, 
three months or something so i might as well eat you know all i can at this given time and this would be like a common thing um that i would feel the need to eat everything then because i didn't know the next time i was going to get it so like my brain would freak out and um I'd eat a lot of food and that's fine. It's completely normal. It's a normal reaction to you to have in recovery. Whereas now I don't have that kind of food as a source kind of thing. Like I don't have that anymore. So that's another thing that it won't last forever. It's just temporarily and you know, it will get better. Also what craving should I listen to you is every single craving you have, you need to listen to it. Even if you just ate, even if you feel really, really full, if you're still able to fit in like a packet of biscuits, if you want to have a packet of biscuits, then go ahead and eat the full packet of biscuits. You're allowed to do that. It's your recovery. You get to choose what you have and you don't have to eat what you think you should have. You eat what you know you crave and what you know you want. Um, so another thing I always say to you is that say you crave like a bar of chocolate, but then you're like, I'll just opt for the banana to see if that fills me. It's not going to satisfy your craving. Yes, it might fill you physically. I highly doubt it too, but it might fill you physically in that kind of sense. But it does not mean that you're going to be satisfied from that banana. And then you probably end up eating the chocolate bar when you could just eat the chocolate bar to begin with in the first place and it would have been done with don't make it harder for yourself like one thing i learned from recovery was i in certain areas i made it harder for myself and i don't know why i made it harder for myself but i just did it was like i would do the thing or i'd freak out about meals and stuff when you know say i would freak out about meal and then i would just be like just get a takeaway then if you're so stressed about it but that would make me more stressed when in fact having a takeaway would make it much more easier because i wouldn't have to worry about you know making something or thinking about having something because it's a takeaway especially if it's getting from the chinese where it's kind of like the same order um i wouldn't have to worry about all the ingredients i wouldn't have to worry about knowing what the calories are and stuff so like i would just make this harder for myself when in fact it doesn't have to be that hard we overthink it. Because food is our main focus, you overthink it. You overthink everything about that meal. Another thing is comparing. Um, another question was, how do I stop comparing? Um, what's comparing like for you now and stuff? So I don't compare my, my food or myself to anyone anymore because you kind of learn, you get to a point in recovery where you're just like, fuck it. Literally, fuck it. You're just like, I don't care anymore about what people think about me i just want to be happy i just want to be better and this is kind of like the mid-range of recovery and you're in the end where you sort of have this moment where you're just like i don't care anymore i just want to be better and i was like this for a really long time um you know just blocking everyone out and stuff but before i got to this phase i was like extremely disordered i would compare myself because you're hyper focused around what other people are eating you're hyper focused on what the world's eating even you know you you sit down and you end up watching hours upon on hours of like ten thousand calorie challenges what i eat in a day is that's not normal behavior that's eating disorder behavior that's extreme hunger behavior. You're hungry, you need to eat. Instead of watching other people eat, you eat. Or if that comforts you watching other people eat as well, then you know what? Eat alongside those people, watch those people, but sit down with a huge snack plate as well. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't just sit and watch others eat and just not do it yourself. And another thing I would do was I would I would tell people, I would watch people what other people eat. And then if they didn't eat enough food, I'd be like, you haven't eaten enough food today. You need to eat this and this and this. That's not enough to eat. And they'd like turn around and look at me and be like, what have you ate today, Emma? And I'd be like, do you know what I mean? That's not good. You should not give advice on what other people are eating if you're not eating enough food yourself. You are not kind of in that mindset even to give that advice to other people as much as i'm sure you want to help people because you don't want people going down the same line as you you are not in the position to give that advice so first of all stop looking at everyone else around you stop looking at whatever everyone else is eating because you know what i used to do the same thing and i know it's last night i had a chinese takeaway of course and um i was sitting scrambling eating more than my family and my mom was really full quite quickly and i just looked at her and i was like i just made a soggy comment like weakling about the food whereas if that was back in the day when i'm eating disorder and i see my mom stop halfway through when she hardly eat anything i would freak out 
I would have just been like, oh my god, this is not happening. I cannot just sit here and eat, continue eating food while she's not eating food. She's only had this much and she's full and everything. And that I should feel full now. I would have had this complete process going on in my mind. And it would be like clockworks going on in my mind. Whereas I literally didn't care less. Like, you just don't care anymore. You get to the point where you're just like, right, she's full. That doesn't, that she isn't me. You know, I mean, she doesn't have my body. And... I think a thing that helped me stop comparing was when I reached my set point. When I reached my set point weight and realized that my weight kind of wasn't budging and I was kind of just chill and I got to eat how much I needed for my own body and that, you know, what I ate was what I ate. You know, I needed to sustain my body. I didn't know if I eat any less, I'd lose weight and stuff and I didn't want to go down that path. So I'm just happy at the moment eating whatever I want to eat to satisfy my own body because it's the body that really matters right now. <laughs> it's kind of just realizing that you need to put yourself forward and just be selfless. And just do your own thing. Stop focusing on what the world's eating and just be you. So gaining weight forever, question mark. So another question was, will I gain weight forever? Which is obviously really, really common. And it's kind of like, I hear it all the time all the time um especially now as a recovery coach the main thing is i'm really scared that i'm going to gain weight forever i don't want to do that and i get that fear i had that fear you know i was like it's gonna work for her but it's not gonna work for me i would see tower through and be like yeah she did it but i'm just gonna continue eating forever i'm gonna develop a binge eating disorder i'm not gonna be able to stop gaining weight i'm gonna be like like a huge which was like a really bad thing in my mind back then um, I was even, even scared to get to a healthy weight because I didn't even want to be healthy weight because that was scary for me as well. And then um, I just kept gaining weight and I kept gaining weight and I kept gaining weight and I overshot my weight and I was freaked out. I was freaked out. I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm not stopping my weight. And then all of a sudden, it kind of just, it just stopped. Like it just, I just stayed. And I was just like, oh, so I'm not, I'm not going to gain weight forever. And I realized that my food wasn't changing. I was still eating the same amount, but I wasn't gaining weight anymore. I mean, what I'm talking about, what I used to eat in recovery, I still eat a lot of the stuff that I used to eat in recovery just now. Um, I still eat big portions of food. I still eat a good takeaway now and again. I still eat cake sometimes. And I, I, I eat chocolate every single day, even. You know... That's normal for me and that's what my body wants and that's what my body needs. I'm going to give my body what it wants and needs and I just don't care anymore because it's it's what's helping my body right now. You know, eating chocolate every day, people might be like, you know, when you see the dietitians and stuff, be like, don't do that and everything like that. Piss off, you know what I mean? My body is functioning perfectly fine. I went for a bone scan the other, um, the other week. They were like, your bones look perfect. I went for a blood test. Your blood's looking fine. Your blood pressure's looking fine. You're really healthy. I am fine. And that's thanks to eating good food. And, you know, eating chocolate and stuff. And enjoying myself and eating what I want to eat. Uh, one of my biggest fears, though, was I started the pill. And I was so scared that I gained so much weight with the pill. I'd be like, oh my god, I've just gained all this weight. And then I'm going to continue getting weight. And I didn't. I didn't. Um, I know everyone's, obviously, everybody's different. I gained like a few extra kilograms and that was it. And I was like, is that it? <laughs> I was expecting so much more. But it goes to show you that if your body doesn't get, need to gain weight, it simply won't gain weight. And that's a good thing. So stopping behaviors. Um, also, two seconds, going back to that gain and weight thing too. But if your body, if you're restricting your intake, your body will continue to gain weight because it, it doesn't feel safe. Like it thinks that it's constantly gonna need weight if you're so restricting your intake because it knows that it's constantly being starved. So just like, keep that in your head. Like, although you think that, oh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm helping myself by restricting myself because I'm gonna lose weight, blah, 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 blah. Your ED is telling you that and it's feeding you lies because you will still gain weight while restricting. So would you rather gain weight while restricting and being miserable and unhappy and with a slow metabolism? Or would you rather gain weight while eating lots of food and enjoying yourself and eating chocolate and stuff and start speeding up your metabolism? You have a choice here. And I know which one I would prefer. 
So stopping behaviors. So stopping behaviors is a thing that kind of happens when you start to slowly come up um, starvation as well. So like a lot of my behaviors that I started stop doing was kind of like when I realized that I didn't have to do them anymore. I didn't gain anything from them. You know, like, you know, having the same amount of fries each time, wanting to weigh out stuff. Like when you realize that life's too short to do that stuff and you stop having the time to do that stuff, you'll be like, oh, I don't need to do that stuff anymore. It's pointless doing that stuff. But you need to snap it in the bud. Like you can't just let it go on and go on and be like, I'll stop doing this this day. I'll stop doing that that day. Do everything in one day. Like, you know, if you if you know that you have lots of behaviors, then don't just finish one in one day. Yes, that's an achievement and that's really good. But push yourself as much as possible to finish, like to get all the behaviors stopped in that one day. Obviously, you know, that's not gonna stay like that. You know, you might do the end of our behavior another day and whatever, but if you're able to just focus that, be like, I'm not doing any behaviors whatsoever and go and call turkey on all your behaviors that you would usually do, it will help you. It will benefit you so, so much. So looking after yourself after recovery is another question. So someone asked me, um, do you still eat your five a day? Do you still eat vegetables? Do you still, like, what does looking after yourself look like after recovery? Um, looking after myself in recovery is how I would say I looked after myself before recovery. So I kind of eat the same amount I did before recovery, um, a little bit more even. But I look after myself, like, it's, it's really hard because every day varies. Like, you know, some days I'll eat my five a day. Some days I won't eat my five a day. Some days I'll eat fruit. Some days I won't eat fruit. And that's just how I feel. Do you know what I mean? If I'm having a really bad day and I feel like I need that kind of, I need to feel really good, then yes, I will eat probably a little bit more, like, what I would say is like healthier and stuff because it would make me feel better and it does make me feel better because I feel more energized and stuff or say if I'm feeling quite rubbish and I want to do something like yoga then I'll do yoga or dance or whatever but I don't make that my aim like I don't wake up and be like I'm gonna eat like avocado on toast for breakfast I don't do that <laughs> or I don't wake I don't wake up and have like plans or goals I just see how I feel and what I fancy and believe it or not, even after recovery, your body will crave food like bananas and fruit and vegetables and stuff. Your body will do that naturally. And when that happens, I will give it. But I'm not just going to do something for the sake of doing it because I just feel like I should do it. I'll only do it if I feel like my body wants it and my body is crying out for it. Um, that's what looking after yourself is. And putting yourself first and feel comfortable and and surrounding yourself with people who make you feel good about yourself surround yourself with people who have good vibes not bad vibes no negative energy who just who you're able to just depend on too like they give you support they're able to be there because not every day is going to be easy not every day is going to be easy it's going to be really really hard days but having the people with you who can support you and be there for you is the main thing and stop being so hard on yourself Stop looking after yourself and start realizing that you deserve food and that you deserve to get better and that it is 100% possible because I'm living proof of that. And if I can do it, you can do it. Nothing is impossible. And remember that nothing great came from comfort zones. It's all about stepping out and stepping out of that little bubble that you've created and realizing that life is too short to weigh your conflicts so guys, I hope this video helped you. Lots of love. It's great to be back and bye.